we were talking before a little bit about this and and she said i don't even um, consider ourselves like only being wedding photographers so it's it's more like we are self-employed and we are business owners so we we will always create something Hey guys, this is Kyle from Narrative. I'm here with Chris and Ruth today, an incredible wedding photography duo based out of Spain. Chris and Ruth, tell us a little bit about yourselves. Hi, Kyle. Hello. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, super excited being here. Thank you for asking us to join this little chat. And yeah, we're like approaching spring here in Mallorca. Mm. So feelings are high. (laughs) So we're like... Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. We we just got the hints of summer coming in here, so I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah, so everything is get cool. Wedding season in Europe is uh, slowly starting. starting. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, we're excited for for another wonderful year of wedding yeah. photography. More yeah. relaxed that's than last year, but yeah, it's yeah. going to be amazing. <laughs> um, how many for a studio like you guys? Are you guys your only? Are, is it just the two of you working with each other? Do you guys have any other associate shooters or anything like that in your business? Well, um, it's basically it's just the two of us, but um, we do have like an assistant in the office. She's um, basically oh, cool. in all the different companies we're having, so she's like our assistant for everything (laughs) honestly that's the dream i thought about getting an assistant for so many years in a row but i could just like for whatever reason never relinquish that but i always thought man it'd be really cool if this email came in and somebody else took care of it that would have been amazing yeah basically there's things where like for example i i can't give away email work so i still do that my Mm. own but she's doing so I give her all the information. So she's doing contracts, invoicing. We do this with a with an app anyway. So we're yeah. That changed my life totally as well. What app are you guys using? If you don't mind me asking, it's a uh, Pixie Sad. It's they oh, have Pixie like Sad, they added a tool like one and a half years ago for invoicing contracts, everything like that follows up, and basically it's doing all the work once it's set up. Nice. And since we were already there, customers there for the galleries. I know there's so many options out there and I was just too lazy to, to, to move to another one. We had some requests like for, I mean, there's Pig Time and all the other ones. Oh, and they're so doing yeah. amazing as well. So, but then we stuck with Pixie Dead and uh, like, then I was like, oh, luckily we, we still with them because that software saves so much time. But there, there are yeah. so many others. Yeah. That do. Yeah. I was so, using Shoot Q years and years ago. If you ever heard of that or used that, it was really, really bad. And then somewhere <laughs> along the way, I jumped over to Tave and it took a few days or a few weeks to set up and it was really an intimidating process. But um, man, that just automated the whole world. And I would tell clients too, they go, hey, I don't know if this payment went through or if I missed this invoice. And I was like, I don't even really know either, honestly, because something else is taking care of that. We'll yeah, look yeah. into it. <laughs> Uh, what are the other businesses you guys are doing or like what uh, other routes are you guys taking? During COVID, like everyone had a little more time to reflect and think, okay, w- where should this all go after? Or if we ever go back or, you know, yeah. I mean, we all had the all had the same thoughts, I guess. And so during COVID, we started to make hats <laughs> like this. <laughs> oh, these are amazing. So- I so, I saw the hat wall too, and I wondered. Product, I thought uh, either they really love hats and they're really cool and stylish, or they're making them. No, basically that's the only nice wall in our whole house, and they're the hats. So we're like, that's why we're sitting here. It's not on purpose, but yeah, little product placement. So this is our straw collection, but we also do felt hats. So it's like a nice mix. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we started just like out of a hobby, and it yeah. became like a small business. So yeah, it's it's fun. But and... we think it has good potential, and we love it. Like we, we're hat lovers forever. So even before we started the brand, everyone always associated with us with wearing hats. So we were like, yeah. but we never were so happy with the. So I think it's always like that. How you start the best companies or the best things. So we always bought so many hats, and we were never happy or satisfied because they didn't make it through the rain or not rain like we didn't soak them so we just wanted to create a better product and yeah. that's how that's how, yeah, we started. how we started so but that's another so that's <laughs> yeah it's another that's story. so that's so <laughs> that's so cool though i admittedly did not do a deep dive on you guys other than everything i already knew and so i didn't know about the hat thing and that's really cool uh, yeah. It's like world famous body photographers. Oh yeah, we make really incredible hats too. <laughs> um, that's so cool. I feel like so many photographers wear the cool wide brim hats, and it was always like the sign of the cool kids. 
and I've tried. I know Jordan Voth has a little shop in Seattle, and I almost bought one there. And his his uh, now wife was like, "You should. It looks great." And I just didn't feel like I could pull it off. But yeah, you guys have the look, and it's it's part of your signature <laughs> style. No, oh, thank you. Yeah, thank yeah. You. I think I, we. I I always wore them during the weddings because I cannot shoot with sunglasses. It's a mess, and I hate this like the sun when you're shooting ceremonies and it's coming in yeah. super bit. So that's why I um, was wearing hats, and then it's like yeah, yeah. And then the craft also was very fascinating. Yeah, yeah. To to learn and and to see how how it all comes. But through. you Are should your... get one. I mean, you're wearing a cap, so you can wear a hat. <laughs> I mean, I wear a backwards hat a lot when I'm like I have curly hair, and sometimes day two curls are just not doing it. And you just got to throw the hat on. So today I was like, it's not going to work. So maybe <laughs> maybe I need to order a Chris and Ruth felt hat and bring that to my Chicago fall and winter vibes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, that's so cool. I'll have to look into that because I'm sure the it's great when like you're already incredible photographers. So it's like you don't have to hire anyone out to take photos of your hats or your product. Yeah. Are you guys selling them in local local stores or anything like that, or is it just all online? No, we have like one local store uh, selling selling hats for us, and then the rest is online. So we're like, yeah, we we took it slow. So it's still it's still a cute brand. So it's not like uh, a massive, but also we're yeah. like we want to if like when it grows, we want to keep it local so that we work with local people so that there's not the plan to source it out to another country or something yeah and really yeah. high end and really like good labor you know so like all these things we'll see do it's you, a cool project do you guys see a do you guys see a world with your photography where photography or i'm sorry hats takes over your main like line of career trajectory or do you guys plan on being wedding photographers until the end of the time or i i couldn't i think i cannot imagine to living without taking pictures so because it's like I started when I was when we met like when I was 15 so it's like more than half my life I I'm I'm making pictures and I love it so much and Chris joined me later then yeah I really miss something when I'm not taking pictures and I think that's why I I'm always searching for like this hat project is for me I really enjoy to make the visuals for it so yeah. i'm like so it's like and i do this for other brands as well so i i enjoyed making visuals so it's like yeah and, yeah. and create a, a brand also. yeah creating the brand but also what's um, with you yeah we were talking <laughs> <laughs> no also we were, we were talking before a little bit about this and and she said i don't even um, consider ourselves like only being wedding photographers so it's it's more like we are self-employed and we are business owners, so we we will always create something. And right now, it's a lot of a lot of this is uh, wedding photography, but also um, with COVID and events not happening, we were like uh, we should like do different business and you know and start um, in different areas, maybe not just events. And we did like a lot of fashion stuff as well. We were doing this before weddings, even like like ten. 12 yeah, years before ago. weddings took over. And then, uh, yeah, last year, two years back, we, we picked up again, like, the commercial um, stuff. So we have a couple of clients that we work with them regularly. Um, yeah, in, in, like, fashion, like, the one is, like, a pajama brand and one is, like, a, a wedding dress brand. And then there's, like, yeah, different stuff. And it's a lot of fun. So it's, yeah. it's maybe, I, I wouldn't say we would stop, like, doing wedding photography but or doing photography maybe it, it will just switch in a different direction at some point yeah right now i would say i will go as long as i can with the weddings because i really love i just love it so it's like yeah when you're on a wedding i'm like i rather shoot a wedding than a, a commercial campaign it's I, the commercial campaign is super much fun and i love the process and that you work with professional models and that's so much easier you can go way more creative sometimes it always depends on the team but then when you're on the wedding and you feel all these connections between the people something so meaningful i feel like the the commercials can't you just can't compare so i've like with the commercials it's fun and I, since we picked up the commercials again i feel like my shooting my photography is way 
way better than before because oh, wow. you have to work with different light. You have so many different approaches when you shoot fashion and you have to work differently, like faster, like more timed and, and stuff. So I think every, like all, b- both sides did um, uh, crow. Co- like compliment. Compliment, yeah. Mm. But then I'm like, okay, but if I have to choose, I still would go with the weddings. The emotional yeah. component for sure for weddings yeah. is just unlike any other space. Sometimes I'll speak with other photographers who maybe shot weddings really early in their career and they'll kind of dismiss it a bit as they don't really want to do it or something, or it's just not for them. But they'll always notice that, man, like, being a wedding photographer is kind of this boot camp of scenarios you have no control over the light you have no control over the timeline for the most part you've you're really winging it all day i tell people i'm a professional winger like i just have to do whatever's given to me and i can try to guide my my client and the day and the timing i can try to push things along but ultimately it's really out of my control and i just kind of have to let it let the thing go Um, And I think it's such a benefit to learn to shoot things that way for a business that you have to deliver upon, because then when you want to go and shoot other things, you just have all these incredible tools in your back pocket. I've started shooting more with like a little bit of studio lighting, but even then I, I won't commit to it. I'm bringing in like projectors and little sunset lamps I buy on Amazon for $10. I just refuse to like fully go in for some reason because I go, well, I'm a natural light photographer. If I shoot this model work or this portrait work, I, I just want to bring that into play because that's how I've learned to shoot. But to try to venture out and do other things is so cool. So it makes sense. It sounds like you guys are just strictly creatives. You just want to make stuff. Yeah. Um, and so wherever that, wherever that calls from, you guys can reach into. And having this base, this boilerplate of being incredibly uh talented photographers just lets you enter those doorways yeah we really like we're really grateful how how everything like came came together the whole way so sometimes you look back and you're like oh my god like (laughs) really lucky so it's like yeah yeah thankfully i never get nervous for it once in a blue i'll i'll show up i think the first wedding i ever really got nervous was an elopement in barcelona and i i thought i looked around at the venue and i went man this place is really beautiful. If I don't do a good job, it's totally on me. It has this, this is, everything is perfect. It, and the only person <laughs> that can mess this up is me. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really a humbly and rewarding job to just be invited to people's most incredible emotional yeah. day and get to stick a camera in their face throughout. Like what a cool gig. Yeah. We know, we know these situations where you're like, Oh wow. Everything is perfect. If, if I don't deliver, I'm I I would feel like the worst photographer ever. You know, like this kind of re- yeah, pressure. Lo- like yeah. this pressure. <laughs> we had once like I I don't get nervous easily, so I'm super um, easy going. So Chris gets nervous more easily, but uh, we balance each out. So he's bringing me up with his little. Um, nerves and i cool him down but (laughs) but then like even like one wedding was five years ago almost um we did not know like it was like we had to sign a lot of clause about um like it was secret or how you say oh like a non-disclosure agreement kind of thing yeah that's so things like that so and (laughs) we were not super aware like what's going to be so they did not give us a lot of information and then we arrived the day before the wedding and we had to go for the location check and everything and we realized, we realized how big that the event is going to be. So yeah, it was like, like in what we imagined, it was like maybe 3% of what it was. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> so I got so nervous I, that I was like um, looking for another photographer last minute, but I could <laughs> not tell like for what exactly... Because yeah, and also the 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 ceremony happened to be like uh, just like half an hour before sunset, and no, then there was not a lot of time. No after. first look, like oh, group man. pictures, couple pictures. So we were like, if they are late, we're dead. Like if <laughs> if they are yeah. just, and the bride was forty even late, late a little bit. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but of course. In the, <laughs> but in the end, the, it was okay. But. We were like, that was a day I was I like, yeah. I just couldn't believe. I was like, <sighs> oh my God. I look back on those days where I've had like that, where I go, man, these guys are so lucky 
that they had a good wedding photographer because if there's just so many other photographers who would have been in a similar position and it just would not have turned out that way. Oh, we don't have any first look or any time for family or group photos and you're having your wedding ceremony and it's already getting dark. Okay. Uh, Oh, we're shooting your entire outdoor dance party and there's no additional ambient lighting. There's one tree in the corner I can bounce a flash of. Okay. Um, And it's just like, all right, I'm so glad I'm able to like amoeba my way through this because otherwise like, man, it could, it could just go a totally different direction. I love looking at those chaos days in the, in the rear view mirror. Yeah. 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 I was looking at that gallery like, like a a week ago because we had to look for a a picture and I was like, Oh my God, we did, we really did so well. But you know, like the, the, the month after that wedding, I still was stressed about the wedding. So I thought it was not, ideal but now when yeah, i look back I, I, i'm like oh my god wow yeah, but you also you always think like with a bit more time we could have yeah. done so much more and stuff like that yeah. but in the end yeah in the end it is how it is so there's no they can't like they won't compare because it just happened once and everyone did everything possible so but it yeah. was <laughs> it was a good experience i have but, like yeah. a few things in my mind i try to i've like because i would leave weddings and i would leave a wedding that was not great. It just wasn't, you know, it wasn't up to the standards that I had hoped that that day might have been or that I know that I could do or whatnot. And I would get in the car and I'd really beat myself up about it. And when I was shooting a lot, I had a business partner named Steven. And he really like kind of riddled into me this idea that like, hey, what we just did today is like a 10 for them. It might be a two for us, but it's like a 10 for them. And so even on the days that I didn't come out and like really shoot the Kyle Wilson Hinterland stills branded day um i know that at least i did a great job for what was given to me and that's all i really can do yeah um but i felt that it's you know i'd beat myself up later or go oh if we had just a little bit more time why didn't i why didn't i walk over there 10 more feet why couldn't i get the client to agree to this thing why was the dj doing these games and killing my timeline and just so many of those little things and yeah i'm i'm definitely big on uh ruminating in my like post activity and being like oh what if I could have? Dang. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's hard. Yeah. It's a hard thing. We like leave a wedding with kind of guilt sometimes, which feels weird. I think it's also good, good sign when you're like that, because it's like you really want for them the best of the best. Yeah, it so means you're like, really attached you're like, really... to what you do and yeah. you really want to get the best out of every situation. Yeah. Do you guys do you guys film a bond or form a bond with your clients? Like do you guys speak a lot with your clients throughout the wedding planning process or they do, I know everybody runs it differently. Some people get an inquiry, they book it and then they don't talk to them to like a month before the wedding. Um do you guys kind of get close with your clients at all? Yeah. So we like so when they uh reach out, we send them our package then and for us like it's kind of they don't have to have the call with us before they book, but I would say 95% of our couples follow that advice because we're like, so we always like take a look at like all our galleries. So you know how we work. So they get at least seven galleries. They take a look and can take like a look at. Yeah. We always have a call because I, I don't like to just random book, book people. I really, I want to make sure they like us. So it's not yeah. about that that we like them because usually like they know us. So we put out, they see our work, they see us on Instagram. So they, most of them follow us like a lo- super long time. So they feel like they uh, know us, but I still want to make sure that when we are in the uh, chatting with each other, that they are like, okay, I really can have fun with these, these guys. Yeah. I know they are like cool and I can talk to them. So that's how what we do. And then they sign and then they get like a booklet. So where they get like a lot of uh, tips for the day. So we, we cover like an intro all guide. These. Yeah. So super yeah. cute and small. They get it by postman because I don't like all this digital. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, oh, good I for you. That. I tried. I tried to turn this part into physical paper and mailing it out. And I would probably be able to do better now because I'm better with my adult routines and habits. <laughs> Uh, but five, six years ago, no way I've got a, I have a stack in my drawer right now of the things I tried to put together years ago. I'm like, they're going to get an intro guide and a handwritten thank you card and this part. Yes, that that's what they get. 
and I got a sticker, and it comes in this beautiful black envelope. Yeah, you, the assistant. That's the thing. Ah, I need an assistant, and all I have is me. <laughs> no, really, like that's like I and I feel like some of our colleagues are like, oh no, they they it's never valued when we do it, but. Honestly, like we got such a good feedback from from our couple. So I feel so, but also it's because I value things like that. So I'm like, and I think that's why we attract people who value that as well. I think it's like. There's something yeah. great about getting a handwritten anything in the mail. Yeah. Like it, I have a, my <clears throat> behind my monitor here is just a, a wall of cards that people have written me mm-hmm. and it's usually from like friends and things and it's just all handwritten things. And I, the idea that like they'll, they've booked this person really mostly on the internet. Like they found me on Instagram. They emailed me on my website. We had a phone call cause I didn't meet with them in person for one reason or another. And if they're far away, we're probably not going to meet for a while or until potentially the day of. And so if they can get something that like my hands have touched and like in their hands as well that they can put on their fridge or their drawer or whatever, I think that's a huge connection point between photographer and client that like really builds that rapport. Yeah. And the same is like after, like the same after the wedding. So they get like a little box additional to the gallery in USB drive. So they get this little box with some some just printed. like five, six really nice printed pictures. And they are so, they like, we just sent them out for the last year because, oh my God, the last year. So <laughs> our, our assistant had to send like a ton. They were all so sweet. And actually I feel, I was like, oh, it's too late. It's like almost half a year after the wedding or longer, but they were like, oh, that's the sweetest. So we're like, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Get an assistant <laughs> for that. <laughs> no, because I had those, I had actually... I had a box of those boxes, like really nice walnut made boxes. And I, and I'd sent them out for a while and then, you know, it just kind of trickled down, but yeah, I wanted to do little prints as well. And I think I wanted to do like a hundred because I'm way overachieving. You're smarter. Do like, do like five, do like five and a box and they'll be stoked. Yeah. Like everything, yeah. like it's I on mean, a nice paper. It's like, it's like the, yeah. I mean, the, the print costs around how much is it? One, one dollar 50 or $2. Like it's really expensive. Yeah. Uh, print with a cotton paper. like this paper that how you call that when it's like hand Cards. um uh, oh hand. oh fine art paper probably yeah fine art you paper know, yeah I, I, there's a name for that side trim, it with a I, hand, yeah. they rip it with a hand so it looks like mm. something yeah i love it when you touch <laughs> it it's like oh. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think I did the math on it. It was like seventy five to a hundred dollars a client to like put all this stuff together, which is so yeah. little compared to you know seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars. Yeah, um, yeah. That's why you guys are, and that's why you guys are Chris and Ruth. You're killing it. <laughs> oh, you're sweet. Uh, but also, yeah, you're building this bond with your client, so on the, it, it makes sense that you're emotionally invested. So, like on the day of, if it doesn't go the incredible way that you hope it does, you're like, oh, I want. I want Lauren and Ryan to have the best day. <laughs> yeah. But for me, like, so for me, it's like, I, I was more into um, this, like that I had a vision for a wedding. I, I, I think I, I'm not, I'm good with that now. So I had this more in the past. Now I'm always like, I really want them to have the best day ever. So I get easily annoyed when there's a videographer working with us who basically stages everything. I get so annoyed because yeah. I'm like, guy, that's like their wedding. I want them. Yeah, I want them how they are. So it's, I don't it's want not like, um, a protection. Pushing, it's, <laughs> yeah. It shouldn't be like pushing them into your vision of like yeah. your pictures. I think, yeah, that, that's what. We never did that, but we, I stopped I- even like thinking too much about the wedding before. But for me, it's like just have it the whole day so natural is for me the most important. So like yeah we had that like especially now winter we were not working europe i always feel like for me for us the Euro- the weddings in europe are a little more fluent than when we for example shoot like we shot in philippines now or like in, in mexico. mexico sometimes i feel it's a bit more like Structured. they put a, too much the structure on the couple yeah. and i um the wedding planners and the rest of the team and i i it shocks me. So I'm like, uh, because it's not with our nature and I, I don't feel like I want to be part of that team. There are moments when there's been like two or three videographers and maybe even, maybe even a photographer or two. And I see them all like, 
crowding the bride and groom, I will step back from that moment sometimes because I'm like, this isn't, that's not good. This isn't, this doesn't look good for the guests. This doesn't look good for the bride and groom, especially when they're just doing something like cutting the cake. Um, like this, we don't need that much. And whatever my second's getting is probably good enough for that arguably throwaway moment. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to, I'm going to step out and go do something else. This idea that um, it's not natural. I think that that was a big thing with weddings that in America, at least that has slowly changed. It's this like okay. super structured thing where they're running from, thing to thing to thing to thing to thing all day and without a first look or some time to relax i don't let my couples do anything a half hour before their wedding especially if they've had a first look i'm like here's the deal i don't care what your planner wants from you you're gonna go sit in a room together because you're like your best friends you're your two most important people in your life and you're about to get married why don't you go like relax for a minute together and be excited about that moment um rather yeah. than running to go see if mom needs a bracelet flower um yeah just like i want them to be stoked about their day and i and mm -hmm. i i'm glad that as weddings have changed from that really traditional style where they have they have to do all this stuff um but video still does it you know they want to structure it so i always tell my clients i go hey you know video might have you repeat stuff i don't know anything about video i don't want to know anything about video if they need to do that it's totally fine i'm never going to have you repeat a moment there's not, yeah. I'm not going to have you have your mom fake putting your buttons of your dress on if she's unable to do it. That that's however your dress gets put on. That's, that's the photo that's going to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think that's a, a much better approach, but it, it was harder. It used to be really hard with clients like that because they, they wanted those structured moments and things and they hadn't seen a brand <laughs> that I had created yet because it didn't exist. I don't like the unnatural side of things and, and video and other components of the day really, uh, it yeah. bum me out sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's like I I I feel like it's not all video. So we know we have some friends, they're amazing videographers and they capture the most natural, but like the quality is like another world. Yeah. And I, I'm not I, I just don't know like where some of the videographers or I think also they are photographers who do it the same way. So but we are the photographers, so we never meet other photographers yeah. on the wedding. So for us always the video are the bad. So I think it's important to chat with them about that. But I just I tried it on weddings to talk with them like a little and say, Hey, can you let things just happen longer so don't crash the scene don't like mm. when they make the exit i don't need a touch up and i don't need i want the emotions they just have them the ceremony they just exited like an amazing thing and they are happy and they hug each other they and cry, they cry yeah. the mom comes they all cry and then they come the wedding planner calls for a touch up and i like what the fuck <laughs> like really <laughs> yeah i think i've i think i take a pretty aggressive approach with my like planners i don't have too much of an issue i i've had a couple where i've um well i put them in their place and i was like listen here's the deal i don't you need to get away from me <laughs> um but videographers um i just tell them i go hey here's the deal i'm like a horse with blinders and i'm gonna forget your existence so i'm gonna do everything my way and as soon as you need something please interrupt me and say you'd like this shot but i'm gonna do it my way throughout this portion of the day and i'm gonna keep moving to the next thing so if you don't interrupt me you're just gonna get what you get and uh, yeah. that's been nice because it just lets me be the main person because I think photography is always the entree to the side dish that is video. And it'll always kind of be that way. Um, and then wherever they get in, they get in. Um, or if we, you know, organically work together, if we work together in the past yeah, or something. I but prefer that, yeah. So we always try to build a team. Yeah. But sometimes throughout the day, yeah. you're like, oh, yeah, it's just they when don't the want. approach is <laughs> yeah. too different. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's, it, yeah, it's the most important to, to be a good team. Yeah. And, yeah. Because it's, it's, it's not about, you know, the, the vendors on the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's the thing. Like, we're always like, yeah, let's, let's team up. Like, yeah, maybe they need to teach a little more teamwork in the workshops. <laughs> All the work. Honestly, yeah. Do, you know, they I'm should. like, that stuff never gets talked about, like working with other vendors. Yeah. Um, it's always, you know, there's, there's, there's a few things. Working with other vendors, um, how to do your budget, um, how to do data backup. Like those are like some really boring <laughs> things that nobody talks about in these educational spaces. And I think they really should. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I I feel the same. So I'm like, so everyone could deliver better. So it's like, we totally understand the approach from videographers. We we actually did uh, video stuff in the past as well. Mm -hmm. So we get that, and 
uh, we know sometimes the, for the video you need a longer take than what you need just a click or you cannot yeah. go upright with the video so i get that you need another space or better yeah but then sometimes i'm like like what you said we don't need to stage things three times because actually you're able to catch it naturally with a video if you're present but yeah. i think it's a, a lot about how they work i feel i don't want to talk bad about what they do because they do their best but yeah, it's. I only want to talk bad about the ones that are bad because I want to uplift yeah. the ones that are so great. <laughs> you know, because sometimes yeah, we work yeah, with videographers yeah, yeah, that are true. so incredible. We have a refer list of videographers. So, I mean, everyone has that, like putting vendors together you really enjoy working with. And we, we, we basically have videographers on that list that make it easy and comfortable for us to work and that like match with our philosophy because. In the end, that's what I always say is like, in the end, in front of the guests and everyone, you like the photo and video look like one company because for the guests, they don't know whose photo, whose video. So in the end, yeah. you're, you're the, the, the photo video team. And if the, if you're like not working together, people will, will realize that if you're like annoying the couple that it's just the photo and video team, it's not like yeah. the couple knows it's just the video or, or the photo. But in like for the rest of the the guests, it always will look like okay. The photo video team was super annoying. The photo video yeah, you're team representing was like each other. Blocking yeah. was blocking out for you. You know, like so. I'm always like, hey, we need to be a team. Whatever it costs. So I'm really, I'm really that teamwork person because I feel in the end it's all like the whole reputation for all of us. I'm having sometimes a hard time as well. So I don't say like I need my shorts as well. And I want, but I want that it looks nice. So for example, I, I hate when I, when there are four people on the aisle, you know, blocking the few. So when like, I would never stand a whole ceremony just in the middle of the aisle. Yeah. It's like, I go there, go down, get my shot, leave. So I know yeah. when I have to be there to make it really to also make, enjoyable yeah. for the so guests. So that's our top top priority. Yeah, like yeah. to yeah. Maybe so. that we should maybe <laughs> there should be a workshop teaching just how to work as a team. <laughs> it's just like how to work as a team and self awareness too around guests. I I think that yeah. a lot. One of one of my first questions I ask clients is like, what are you hoping your guest experience is like on this wedding day? Because so many of these people are traveling in and they're not just random guests their family and they're gonna also experience this day as well and i've always been a big guy i'm like six feet tall i used to be like 40 pounds heavier i am really cognizant of like am i am i in the way am i blocking somebody um and so i'm always trying to stay out of video out of guests out of you know i'm, I'm crouched in these small little spaces and i just want to be like neither seen nor heard um and i think that's something that maybe video or some other vendors just like they forget about it. and photographers too i'm sure too i go hey yeah. Come come back yeah. come back over here. <laughs> you're drifting a little <laughs> too close to you're 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 in front of mom and they're exchanging rooms. <laughs> you're blocking mom's view right now. Everyone. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. Oh. But I guess videographers have the same talk. Like they have like a really like um important job. So I'm yeah. I, I'm the one like when I when I look at a good video, I'm like, wow, they capture things you cannot capture with the photo. It's like... Yeah, yeah when, and when it yeah. comes to like uh, voice recordings voice and stuff recording. like that, I'm really happy that we don't have to <laughs> have to do all of this, like record all this. So I actually and... say to the clients, if you have the money, if you book a good video team because you won't regret it. Like uh, we were like two weeks ago, we were watching my parents' um, wedding. You cannot call it a wedding video. It's just like from a camcorder. And mm, so it was yeah. uncutted, just like raw footage, like back to the basics, super simple wedding from our view now, you know? And, yeah. and I was like, I never, I have seen this video last time when I was six years and then it disappeared. And now we like recovered it. My dad saved it somewhere. I sent it somewhere to get it digitalized and we were like i'm not sure if there's anything on that video tape and now we got it back and we were like oh like let's just take a look if the footage is good and we could not stop because we were like oh my god how how cute are they and how yeah, you know it's so fun, it's, it's like a... i and i know the pictures from them from uh because we have them around the house at my parents but the video not and i was looking at the video i was crying at some points because i was like 
wow, how they act and how everything. Yes. We never met them in that age, you know? And we were, we were, it was a friend shooting, shooting the day. And we yeah. were like, so we know, we, we know them all because I mean, we grow up there and we were like, oh my God, he nailed that shot. So we were like, <laughs> we, we, so no, we're like, we're zooming in, zooming in. And it was and, uh, really good quality actually. Yeah. <laughs> and we were like, and that's why I'm like, I was saying to Chris, like, wow, uh, I never expected that such um, a simple video could do so much to me. Like, I'm not sure how many years, like 35 years after they, oh, wow, they yeah. got married. Yeah, I, mean, you know? I think it takes you even more back to yeah, the day, yeah. like a, like a photo could do because yeah. it's like, you know, you, you hear see, them, yeah. the voices. Yeah. And you, yeah. I was like, Oh my God, the, this video is so raw. And so, because my dad basically wanted Chris to cut it nicely so he can surprise my mom. They yeah. won't watch that. They, they don't. They don't like like. To hear yeah, English it's probably stuff. like forty eight minutes long or something, and it just like covers yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. That I'm is sorry. that is the one modern video really thing I like. I I like that it's been shortened down to a few minutes, but yeah, yeah it's yeah. yeah, it's definitely like a without like looking back and being like, oh, the good old days. Um, yeah, those are like the best. And photos like when we were kids of things too. There's, you know, people just it wasn't concerned about like what the photo is gonna look like so much as just no. take the picture. Just take a picture. Yeah, and, and now it means so much. So I'm I'm like, okay, basically you if you don't do it for yourself, do it for the, the your kids or your grandkids. So totally. it's like <laughs> Yeah, they I hope I, I hope the like Super 8 and like l like lower fidelity video cameras kind of keep playing their role. They're kind of coming back a little bit more now, which mm -hmm. I'm totally for because it replicates. It's trying to get that nostalgic feeling. And if it accomplishes it, I'm totally in support of it. Yeah, yeah. same. We're the same. It's like we look on the look stuff. For ourselves, when we go on vacation, taking uh, like an, an analog camera and we're like, wow, these 30 pictures are enough. So it's like, yeah. We have everything we need <laughs> to remember the vacation, the holiday, yeah. There's um there's a producer, his name is Johnny Harris. He's a YouTuber and he used to work for Vox. But him and his wife have a really cool approach when they travel. They like they do it in chunks and they because they realize their memory of their trip, if they are taking photos, they lose the like smells and the sound of where they're at. And so when they first get to like a destination, they're in, they're in Lisbon, they're going to spend like two hours and they're just going to go crazy. They're going to photo, they're going to video, they're going to coffee shop. They're going to do everything with their phones and all that stuff. And then, and then they put it down and then they just walk around and enjoy it completely uninhibited by those things. And they, they made note how their, uh, their memory of those photos and those videos were way more expansive when they conscientiously stopped doing it somewhere along the way which I think is a, an approach that I've been trying to do as well. I have different cameras for different things. Am I hanging out with my friends today on the beach? Cool. I'm going to take a film camera. I don't want to edit photos on Visco and then post on my Instagram feed and tag everybody. Yeah. I don't want to do that. I just want to hang out on the beach with my friends. Yeah, so I feel people are getting a bit more aware of yeah what to use when and also, yeah. I feel like it's yeah. like it was just so much. Like the phones did so many or still do so, so good pictures, but like... It, it's like a flood. <laughs> Do you guys have any workshops or anything coming up this year that you want to talk about or tell people that are coming up that they should check out? No, nothing. Anything you want to pitch? Where can we find your hats? <laughs> <laughs> it's called um, Crown of the Vagabond. Perfect. So I will. Like, I'll be dropping that link in our. Uh, in the yeah, yeah, that's sweet. Here. No, but yeah, there's no workshops. Nothing. No. Like, nothing no. planned. I think during COVID, we're like, okay, what one? What do we want to focus on? how do we feel comfortable doing our job and we were we were just like okay let's focus on that and then don't do the rest so basically whenever we get asked for workshops we're like this year we don't we don't want to speak at any workshops so yeah. we're like, <laughs> honestly we're like, that's Sorry. that's amazing that's so that's that's so incredible that you guys obviously you have so much that you could speak about and help people or educate about um but the fact that you just want to focus on the craft that you're doing rather than get distracted by all the other like kind of pulls yeah. in this job at other revenue streams or cool kid contests. Um, I think that's, that says so much about you guys as a whole. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So it's just our couples ask their weddings, some hats and then the beach <laughs> in Mallorca. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the, that's the life you guys, you have it set up. That's perfect. 
Well, amazing, guys. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. And we're just Perfect. Gonna, it'll end right there. <laughs>